uh, culture change or change per se is is difficult. People don't like change because that means they have to do something differently. And people uh, or a human is a lazy being. Do you know? If I sit this way, I want to sit this way. If I want to watch TV this way, that's when I want. So bringing in a change of culture means that um, we have to go and coach the people on the hour and to want to change and to want to um, abide by legislation and, and to want to work safely because of my peers or because of, of uh, the workplace, you know. So, um, uh, and this, this course then obviously teaches them how to coach the people to want to make a change. Hello and welcome to this special edition of My Safety Hub. Today we are joined by Leon van der Walt, Managing Director for Safety Wallet and Macrosafe, John de Blanche, the Operations Director for Macrosafe and Safety Wallet, and Dion Grunewald, the owner of Action Factory, to discuss their new health and safety coaching course, the health and safety culture transformation, mindset and behavior coaching course. Welcome gentlemen. Good morning. During this interview, we will be accepting questions from you, the viewers. So please leave your questions in the comment section below or send us an email and we will try and cover all the questions that we receive. Lastly, remember to subscribe to our channel so that you may receive any updates in the world of occupational health and safety. So gentlemen, this is an exciting time for you. Very, uh, very exciting, Rocket. Uh, we, we, uh, we're proud to be here today and actually launched uh, the course. It's been coming a long way and Thank you to Dion for initiating it and putting it all together. We appreciate it. Great stuff. I would like to start off with a few questions before we revert to questions from the viewers. Uh, the first question is for you, Dion. As the presenter of this course, can you walk us through some of the key topics or concepts covered in the course and how they can benefit companies or the candidates that attend the course? It was. Initially, a bit of a struggle to determine what needs to go into the course because we wanted it to focus on health and safety, but specifically, how do we bring about a culture change in an organization? But if we're going to make it a coaching course and we want the course to be, you know, to carry a proper certificate, to be internationally accredited and recognized, then we had to balance both of these elements. We had to balance coaching and health and safety. So what is covered in the course? Well, firstly, it's a full standalone coaching course. It's not just a couple of things that's relevant to health and safety. It's a full coaching course, but it has the flavor where it leans towards health and safety. So a lot of the practical stuff, some of the techniques, um, some of the techniques that I've been using for years in a variety of platforms and aspects and situations, has been adapted specifically for health and safety. But if you look at the course, you look at, I would say, probably about 65, 70% of the content. That's purely normal and a high level coaching, executive coaching, group coaching, how do you take a group of people to bring a shift, a change. So what we've added was, well, how do we bring a culture shift specifically regarding health and safety? In an organization so how does someone take a group and coach them on their journey so it's 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 a complex course it's filled with a lot of information but it's in my personal opinion i think it's a great course for anybody mm. even if you are in health and safety or not it will fulfill and teach anybody that does that. john um You've had a lot of experience in the field, um, you know, physically with the operations with MacroSafe and Safety Wallet. Um, so you would have had a lot of exposure with regards to health and safety culture or a lack thereof. Um, why is it such a critical focus for businesses and especially now? Um, okay, uh, in, in the past, health and safety has always been a grudge purchase. Pe people don't want to take um, accountability for health and safety. And where you see a, a health and safety culture change is where people actually want to be proactive. They want to be compliant with legislation. They want to ensure that their people are safe at work or whatever. And that's why it's so important that this course teaches the people and coach them to become um, proactive instead of reactive, looking at a situation differently. Instead of, 
this has been forced upon me. I have to do this this way or that way. There's a total mind shift change and the techniques in there will tell them, listen, um, this is how we're going to use it from you. Yeah, if I can name one of the techniques, for instance, it's like a well-formed outcome. What do you want to achieve with this health and safety program? Then you start at the end and, and you work your way back to the beginning to where you are now. What are the pitfalls that's going to stop us from reaching that? And, and through that, you, you get the people involved and, and that's how you start building the culture and people want to be part of it. You've mentioned health and safety mindset now, uh, which for me is a pretty new concept or a way of looking at building a health and safety culture. Um, in other countries like Australia and England, uh, just to name a few, uh, building a health and safety culture has become pretty much the norm. Um, so Leon, the question that I wanted to ask you now is, where did the inspiration come from to have this course created? Um, and what motivated Safety Wallet to offer it to businesses or employers and to create this culture? Well, Kurt, uh, it's, today is a dream come true. Um, we've been on this journey from, I would say, around about 2015, where I've met you. And um, as, a, as a company, we went on the NLP, uh, all our staff went on the NLP, and we went through uh, lots of phases on, on, on this journey. And uh, for me, it's always made sense. You know, this is, this is how we need to approach health and safety. And I can remember meeting with uh, Mick when I met him the first time around and I said to him, we need to do something like this in health and safety. Somewhere along the line, we, we kind of met one another in that process because the penny start, started dropping and so forth. But if I look at um, health and safety over the years that I've been in it, we've always got one person that's passionate and fanatical about health and safety. Um, when we start servicing a client, we always get that one person that puts his hand up and says, you know, I want to make a difference. We're looking at this course for that one individual. Uh, when we get our committee together, that's the second phase of, of getting everybody on this course. And as a group uh, within the company, start influencing uh, health and safety behaviors and mindset in that process. If we um, succeed, well, not if we succeed, when we succeed in this process, for, for me, the important part is that health and safety is there daily. When, when us as a company or on your premises, we're there for a day, two days maybe, maybe, maybe five days at the most. But if we can have uh, coaches on the floor and they work with the individuals on a daily basis uh, and they know how to influence and how to get the best out of them so that we can move away from the crutch side of things and see it as a culture that we're busy building. Um, that, that, that's the part that uh, excites me. So it's very much like having a health and safety champion in, in the organization, uh, influencing change, <clears throat> bringing about change and where there's challenges getting the tools that you'll be providing in the course uh, to overcome those challenges. So reflecting on the change which you've mentioned now, which would come through the committee or with the help of the committee and this health and safety champion or champions. Uh, Dion, how, would, or how have you seen companies successfully implement the concepts or the tools uh, from an NLP perspective? Because you've worked with many companies. Yeah. I mean, you've got more than 10,000 hours um, that, that you've clocked already. So you must have had some, or at least a lot of exposure um, with regards to teaching these concepts and seeing the change or not. Um, so where have you seen these concepts being successful? I think one needs to understand why they work. And if you look at us as human generally, when we communicate, when we interact, um, when we talk about health and safety in organizations, most organizations, most people, look at what's what we call the service structure behavior. So to make it very practical, let's assume you've got someone in the work environment and they are supposed to wear very specific safety equipment, let's call it a hard hat. 
But for them to do their actual job functionality, the harder it is a bit of a hindrance. It might be that they need to move in their heads or you know, um, be able to look up and see something else. Whatever the reason, the hard hat could be a hindrance. So what they'll do is they'll remove the hard hat because it's a hindrance. Now, historically what very often happens is people look at the surface at that behavior and say so this, this person is breaking the rules, there's certain policies and practices in place, uh, let's retrain them or let's warn them, let's react and respond in a very I almost want to say disciplinarian, authoritarian style of reactive behavior. But there's always a secondary gain for every behavior. For everything we do, there's a reason behind a reason. So someone that takes off a hard hat, puts it down, because possibly the strap wasn't functioning correctly or didn't fit in correctly. The moment he now starts working, there's a second thing that's happening on a subconscious level, and that is. I now feel great that I've done that. I can now do my job extremely well because I've done that. And there's a positive intention behind the actual behavior. Now, does the behavior taken off the hard hat contradict rules of health and safety? Yes, they do. But what most people don't realize and what most companies have never addressed They've never addressed what are the secondary gains, what is the true intention behind the behavior. So if we can find out what that true intention is, that I can do my job better, and when I do, I feel proud, then we can coach that individual into a direction where they can, they can possibly an adjustment of the strap of the helmet, where they can adjust the training that he receives, and ensures that he can still function in his work, wearing the helmet, doing his job properly, and feeling the pride with it. So this would require a different level of communication, a different level of interaction, a different level of understanding, a different level of processes to go through with that individual, with a team, and possibly you know, other people in the organization. So the approach has changed. In the past, you took off your helmet, broke the policy, Here's the new procedure that we're taking you through. Now we're saying, come, let's have a chat. Let's have a coaching conversation around it. Let us look at not just the surface reasons, but let's truly understand the deeper structural reasons. Because if we understand that, then we know where to bring in change. And if we can do that pro progressively, systematically in the organization, involve more people, then we get to a critical mass point where change starts to happen naturally. And that's the target, and that's what we, we, we're focusing on. So we've obviously done this in many organizations. But Microsoft is one of them where we started a few years ago. And we've been blessed to have you know, opportunity in many organizations. Change management especially. Um, this is the old process in change management that we've been dealing with for over 10 years uh, already. So it's, it's not a new concept. We've adapted it to make it specific for the health and safety industry. I think that's what's new. Um, it's an approach that never, nobody's ever really done before. So we, we are the, the trendsetters, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited. Yeah, Dion, uh, just to add on to that, that's, um, I think, where the, the, the influence pyramid comes into play, where you want to influence the individual and not the group per se, because people tend to go with what their peers do. And then um, with this uh, type of approach, we're looking at um, seeing the people as humans, yeah. not just as subjects um, needing to do what I say you must do. Seeing them as human beings, why aren't you adhering to this? Uh, instead of going to the correction straight away, understand why this is happening, whatever. See them as humans and then take that. And that's the way you're going to start changing culture, one by one by one, and the people will start following. Mm, yeah. So the influence pyramid, that's a tool for understanding an individual better um, so that you can work with them more effectively or work with others around them more effectively to effectively influence change, right? So I want to go back to something that you've mentioned now. Uh, you, you touched on the intent behind a behavior which is not necessarily accepted. So an unsafe act, removing a hard act. Uh, not cleaning up your workstation, um, 
okay? Wh whatever the case may be, something that, that causes a hazard to others. Um, and when that happens, and the health and safety officer, the committee uh, management, when they reflect on those actions, they see it as the person's a rebel, doesn't want to fit in, doesn't want to follow the rules, but you've just mentioned that there's a positive intent behind that. Can you elaborate on that? Because the understanding of the root of the intent, which Johnny has now alluded to with regards to the influence pyramid, that's when the change really happens. I think what, what we need to understand is when we look at individuals, it's very, very easy for us to judge behaviours on the surface. Because we judge behaviours not based on the person that's doing the behaviour's intent. We judge behaviours on the effect it's going to have on the larger group. Which in essence is not wrong because that is one of the requirements for a society to be able to function. But historically what we've done is we've approached it through, as I mentioned, either a disciplinarian or a strong authoritarian approach. And we know it creates even more resistance. So we said, well, let's take a step back. Let's look at what has worked, what has brought culture changes in, in the past. And the critical thing is we need to bring people into an organization where even if they are doing certain behaviors that are not serving the rule structure, we need to realize that that person is still a human being. The reason they're doing that behavior is because for some reason, and we're not, we can't read their minds, but there is an intent behind that behavior that serves them, otherwise they would not do it. So instead of just trying to immediately on the surface force down a new rule, let us install a behavior that serves their intent and the rule. And can that happen? Absolutely. We've been doing this for years. Um, humanity has, we developed that way. So that's the approach we've taken to make, because there's so many extra benefits. The moment, the moment you take someone and you have inclusive conversation with them, where you truly talk to the person as a human, you look at their driving forces, their intentions, you come up with a solution that's sustainable, that we can be applied, tested first if necessary, but it can be applied and it's sustainable and it serves the larger group and you open up communication in the group regarding this process, then you create teams. Not a word team, well, there's 12 people in that group, therefore team. Now you create people that realize that I'm not just accountable for myself, I'm also accountable for those around me. This is an inclusive process where we all benefit from. And the moment that happens, that's the essence behind culture change, is when you get a group of people saying, my actions, my behavior, my responses, my uh, mannerism in how I do things, influences those around me. And if we can get that right, which I know we can, then we can create a culture change. Then all of a sudden, it's not, well, there's a rule now, let me resist. Then there's, there's a rule, let me investigate it, let me put the reasons behind it, let me understand it, intent behind it, let's see what it's adaptable, how to adjust, tweak it, and realign it, so it brings in the results. Yeah. No, I agree, uh, Dion, yes, he, um, thanks for that elaborate, elaborative um, explanation. Um, uh, okay, what I just want to add to this is, uh, uh, the building block for culture change is trust. And you need to build rapport to gain trust with your people. The only way you're going to gain their trust is to actually speak to them, communicate to them, get their input into that. And then you start from there going forward. And this is what this course is going to uh, uh, help you with. Now for me, you know, and it starts with one person. So, so that's the whole idea at the end of the day is to have one person per company that's done the coaching course and and then take it from that perspective if, if, if we get the concept that one person to understand it he takes it or she takes it into the workplace we get the committee to understand it the committee takes it to the workflow to understand it 
we, we're getting momentum on that process and we've got a health and safety program that, or culture that, that's sustainable, that's there forever. It's not something as we've experienced in the past. We're there on that day, health and safety is there for that day. Thereafter, it, it kind of falls flat because, uh, because you've ticked the boxes. But everybody's not looking after themselves the way they should be looking after themselves and to their fellow employees. I'm glad you, you touched on that now because uh, we have a question here from Peter. Uh, who is a business owner from Pretoria uh, for you and he's asking what are some of the main benefits that companies can expect to see as a result of their employees completing this course uh, and how can it positively impact their impact sorry their health and safety operations oh yeah okay uh, compliance is always the benefit uh, it, it will be there but it's compliance uh, with a different spin to it it's compliance that I want to do it. It's not a thing if I must do it. Um, so, so continuous improvement for me would most probably stand out the best um, because, because everybody's working on it and everybody's discussing the issues on hand for the day. Um, we're looking at the problems and we're looking at ways to make it better and to resolve those issues. So, so that would most probably be my, my uh, standout for the question that we've got there, is continuous improvement. Mm. I also think, um, you know, maybe from an operational perspective, you know, some of the main impacts, the physical impacts that, that employers are looking at is, you know, savings, not having to deal with incidents and accidents, not having to replace a forklift, uh, not, after, not having to have a loss of production when, uh, you know, an employee has died or they lost a limb. Uh, you know, those are the obvious things. Um, am I correct in saying then that if we look at the continuous improvement in, in your answer, it's more a case of having to continuously be aware of how I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and in that respect, you know, alluding to what Dion mentioned as well, it's not only about me. There are others around me that have families. There are others around me that uh, have kids they need to feed, kids that need to go to school. And if I'm not being accountable and responsible for myself, I'm being negligible towards them as well. Yeah. Look, okay, if I can uh, jump in there quickly, it's about um, putting yourself constantly in somebody else's shoes and, and thinking, how is this um, act that I'm doing now going to influence the next person? And um, if I influence the next person, that person is a father, he's got children and wife at home, and he needs to go home healthy and safe. So if I do this, am I placing him at risk or not? And, and that's, that, that's what this course teaches you. Constantly think, think of your behavior, change your mindset and see what, what do you see other people do and how am, 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 are my duties or my activities impacting them? Well, I mean, it's, if, if I take a practical example, if I can share this quickly. Before I had any exposure with regards to health and safety, I never thought about you know, my own actions or uh, a lack of action and how they can actually create risk for myself or the people around me. When I started getting involved in occupational health and safety, it got to a point where my wife started getting irritated with me. You know, why are you constantly double checking this, double checking that, making sure this is correct, making sure the tap's closed, whatever the case may be. But over the years, it's now influenced her to the point that she's exactly the same as me when it comes to dealing with risk. Mm. So in essence, what we're saying is, if we have a starting point with one person that thinks a certain way about health and safety and the way that they deal with health and safety, that can influence another person and mm. another. And at the end of the day, we might be successful in creating a community that thinks the same way. And the benefits in that regard, if, if I just you know, project the benefits of what they could be, that's huge. Yeah. I have another question here for, for you. Uh, it's from Gail. She's an HR manager from a company based in Cape Town. Uh, obviously, she doesn't want to say, uh, want me to say what the company name is. How does this course incorporate best practices and lessons learned from other successful health and safety culture change initiatives? 
And what are some of the key takeaways that companies and employees can expect to gain from completing the course? So I think let's focus on the second part of that question. What are the key elements that businesses and individuals uh, can expect to gain from completing the course? Well, you mentioned business and individual. That's, that's two approaches. So let's start with the business approach. So every business has um, you know, a certain number of employees, health and safety, compliance becomes you know, one, of the, one of the concepts in your company. It costs money. If there's an incident and the plant needs to close down or you know, there's, there's damage control, there's two ways of looking at that. One, it's, it's a human being that would injure, so that in itself is horrific. But it's also costing the organization a lot of money because in some cases there's a shutdown until the investigations are finished. You know, it can become a very expensive exercise if you're not fully compliant in health and safety. We know this. So from an organizational or from a company standpoint, what if we can bring in a concept? And that's what we've done with this course, where we can make an attitude towards a positive health and safety improvement sustainable and continuous. And the, the key word lies in sustainability. So if we can bring in this proper culture shift, which we will, then from a company <coughs> point of view, the return on investment is, is a no-brainer. Um, it's an easy, easy decision and choice to make. What do you learn from the individual side? Because I mentioned you, the question there twofold, one from a company yeah. and one from an individual. Yes. Every individual that wants to develop themselves requires to learn something new. So human beings are never stagnant. You know, there's a saying that says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, in, in essence you can. In fact, every human always changes. We're always going through some kind of development and change. The question is, where do you want to change to? What would you like to become? I love the concept of coaching because it teaches us how to communicate with humans better, how to have conversations where the person I'm having that conversation with can leave the conversation a better version than what they were of themselves before they enter the conversation. So does a course like this have a positive spin-off in health and safety? Yes, but for the individual, it will alter the way you behave as an individual, the way you think, the way you measure and observe people in the world around you, it'll make you a better human being. It's as simple as that. It will make you a better human being for whom? For yourself. So I do believe the course will benefit individuals and organizations. And the great thing is, as Leon mentioned, you know, one person in the team or organization joins the course, that will have a ripple effect. It will have a rub off effect. I'm convinced if organizations you know, decide to write this one, that they will very quickly say, well, we need one for that department as well, we need one for that group of people as well, and they'll probably expand it, expand it um, but they'll see the individual benefits and people will talk about it. That's for certain. Yeah. If I can just pause in there, um, I want to reiterate the fact that uh, I've not met one company where there's not one individual that's committed to making a difference in health and safety. And, <clears throat> and that's, that's for me the, the ultimate uh, part, part of bringing that change in. It's, it's, it's that when we go in and uh, we start servicing the client, we always get that one person that they dedicate to us that needs to assist us, and that individual is generally the person that wants to make a difference. But they don't have the tools, they don't have the narrow, they focused on what the legislation says and, and, and we now wanting to teach them, take the legislation and let's bring change to mind in, in, in that sense. So, so for me the emphasis is the uh, commit with that one person. <laughs> I agree with that, it'll be and if you remember a while back, we actually met with someone that was in a very large organization in, in you know, the footprints throughout Africa. And her role was very specifically to bring a positive cultural shift regarding health and safety. And her words were, I have no idea how to do this. 
Because nobody's come out with a process. How do you do that? Um, it's great to want to do it, but how do you do it? And if you've got the right person with a passion, give them the tools and the how, and there we have it. Easy, easy and straightforward as that. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges that um, newly graduated candidates that may have completed a diploma in health and safety or uh, a course in health and safety certificate, national certificate, that they face once they go into the workplace for the first time. So they're young, inexperienced, um, but they've got the knowledge and they just don't know how to apply it with individuals who outrank them who maybe know a lot more about the work processes than they do, um, who understand the dangers, the risks better than they do. And now they've got to try and influence those individuals. And some of those individuals may understand the concepts, but they are completely against the grain when it comes to following the rules. And how do you change that mind? Um, so if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying is that the, the tools, the mechanisms, the, the influence that would come from this course would be empowering these individuals as well uh, to be able to go and effectively influence change, uh, making use of the tools from the course, including the influence pyramid as well. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, we focused on, 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 on the employee-employer relationship, but this course is for, for the health and safety consultants out there as well. Mm -hmm. So. You know, uh, we've been behavior-based teached over the last decade in, in um, going in, doing our audits, looking at what legislation says, and then quote legislation to fix problems. <coughs> and um, for health and safety consultant, they sit with the same challenges that, than what we sit with. And uh, if they do the course, and they learn ways of how to coach. Uh, they learn ways how to bring change into organisations. Um, you know, it, it will definitely assist health and safety consultants out there as well. Um, and that's the reason why, uh, you know, from, from a safety wallet perspective, we are going to, later on in the year, we're going to start appointing um, um, what we call um, macro-safe authorised dealerships, where where the, the, the consultant out there is going to become a, a Microsoft branded uh, dealership and they would service a, a, a whatever size um, area as such. But those authorised dealerships would need to come through this course as well so that we can teach them how to bring change into organisations and make that difference that's sustainable. Um, Leon, just to, to jump in there what you said now, um, in the past um, uh, health and safety reps were feared people or, or nobody liked them because they dictated what you are doing wrong the whole time and, and uh, quoted legislation saying this needs to be done that way, this needs to be done that way. And what this course is now actually doing, it's teaching the, the, the feared or the disliked person to communicate better, to understand why the people are doing it that way and then try and, and con convert them to, to do what they need to do. So uh, uh, this is why I believe so much in this course that we're doing currently. Yeah, it's not just getting them to do what they need to do, it's getting them to do it because they want to. Yeah. And there's, there's a greater awareness of the more team cohesion, uh, that's the secret behind it. Yeah. It's to get that flow. Uh, and, and we've seen it done in many companies in, in uh, different departments and different reasons. So again, it's, it's not a new concept, but it's applied very specifically now with this focus. And that's exciting. And then imagine a world where people actually comply to health and safety regulations and policies because they want to. Yeah. Yeah. And Definitely. That's what that excites me. Yeah, and I, I want to go back to, to something that you've mentioned, which sounds exciting for me as well. You've mentioned that in the year to come, there would be, um, what did you call it? Authorised dealerships. Authorised dealerships that, that would be working hand in hand with MacroSafe and Safety Wallet and that the training course, this one specifically, is also for uh, health and safety consultants uh, that would be running those areas. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Okay, yeah, the, the, the authorised dealership is 
safety wallet is 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 the solution. It's it's companies subscribe to safety wallet. Um, we've got my safety shop where we all it's a one-stop shop for for health and safety. From the um, work needs to be done on the premises and if those orders are placed on our e-commerce platform um, we will then um, instruct or request that uh, that authorized dealership then go out and do the work the work is twofold it's it's going to implement the safety wallet the triple p system but on the concepts that we teaching you so so this is where the coaching course comes in so our triple p is written in such a way that that it's also a towards strategy it's a it's a well-formed outcome at the end of the day and <coughs> and um, um, so so the, the the consultant or the practitioner as we would call them would would then go out implement the triple p but in each one of those policies and procedures uh, the well-formed outcome would be there and the coaching course would assist them on how to implement that and how to bring that change in, into the organization. So the, the, if, if I listen to, to the whole picture, and I'm, I'm also referring back to an interview which I had with Greg Morse, um, where it was mentioned that there would be training available on the triple P's as well. Uh, the health and safety consultants or graduates, uh, persons that would like to work with MacroSafe and Safety Wallet in uh, these authorized dealerships, they would then have to go through the Triple P training, the culture training, make use of the tools available f uh, you know, from a Safety Wallet perspective as well, including OSH Online. So it's essentially you're empowering every health and safety professional out there to implement a system successfully without only referring to legislation, but by looking at the human aspect, looking at uh, communication, understanding people correctly. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the vision, am I correct? 100%. 100%. 100%. The OSH Act is brought in, 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 well, it's in existence based on making sure that people go on a mouthy and safe after work. Mm. So there's nothing new on it, but because it's a fear-based um, act, you know, there's, there's resistance in, the, in that sense. We just want to break down that resistance and, and uh, do it because you want to do it, not because you must do it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Um, I've got a question here which, which is also linked to what we've discussed now. Uh, and it's from Bungani, it's for you, John. Uh, and he asks, what role do you see this course playing in the broader landscape of health and safety training and culture change? And how can it help companies to meet their regulatory and compliance requirements? Well, Okut, as, I, as I mentioned earlier on, um, uh, culture change or change per se is, is difficult. People don't like change because that means they have to do something differently. And people uh, or a human is a lazy being. Do you know, if I sit this way, I want to sit this way. If I want to watch TV this way, that's when I want. So bringing in a change of culture means that um, we have to go and coach the people on the hour and to want to change and to want to um, abide by legislation and, and to want to work safely because of my peers or because of, of uh, the workplace, you know. So, um, uh, and this, this course then obviously teaches them how to coach the people to want to make a change. And then uh, your second part of the question was, um, how can it be implemented? Yeah, so with regards to regulatory and compliance requirements, how will this course <clears throat> encourage them to meet those requirements? Now, look, it's, it's, it's like we said, people, uh, uh, legislation or compliance to legislation will be automatic because people will want to do it. That would be an added advantage hmm. uh, because if you do what you want to do, then, and you comply with legislation, it's, it's, it's a bonus. And not just that, it's the, the impact on your reputation, uh, the lost time uh, that you save, um, um, injury on duties, uh, days lost in work, uh, a bigger uh, bottom line on profit. So all those are all benefits that will come from this. I have another question here, and this is for you, Leon. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is from Janice. She's an executive assistant, and her question reads, 
How does this course fit into the broader mission and goals of Safety Wallet? And what do you hope to achieve by making it available to the public and to businesses? I think we've covered the second part of this question yeah. already. So let's focus on the first part, uh, which I'll just read it again for you. How does this course fit into the broader mission and goals of Safety Wallet? Well, from, from, a, from a Safety Wallet and a MacroSafe perspective, you know, a Safety Wallet is brought into existence for mindset change. So <clears throat> that the course is 100%, how do we change mind? Uh, from, from a macro -safe perspective, we're focusing on the behaviors, identifying those behaviors and, um, and then finding ways on how to change those behaviors to, to form new habits. And um, via the course, uh, giving the, the students or, 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 or the health and safety officers out there and the reps out there, we're giving them the tools to understand the better and how to bring those, that change in um, and how to change those behaviours. And with doing that, we're then changing mindset, which, which, which brings us back to, to, to Safety Wallet. Safety Wallet's got a few other things in place as well, where um, we incentivize um, that towards strategy. So, so the more you get right, the, 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 the towards strategy as such, the more you get right, the, the, there's rewards for those things. So there's rewards for employers in, in getting discounts on, on their, uh, not on their subscription fee, but on whatever they're purchasing from my safety shop. And for the employees um, at a later stage, uh, rewards would be put in place for them as well, reporting your misses. Mm. Um, doing the inspections and things like that would have a reward system in place as well. And everything would obviously tie into the, the broader mission. Um, and if I move away from the word mission, because I think that's incorrect, but if we move to the purpose, the vision, uh, why MacroSafe is doing what it's doing and why Safety Wallet is doing what it's doing, um, which is to make sure that people can go home healthy and safe after work. Yes. All of these things tie in together towards that purpose. It's, um, you know, we, we're passionate about making sure that people go home healthy and safe after work. Mm -hmm. And we just find the tools in, in making sure that that purpose is on it. Yeah, okay, if I can jump in there as well. It's, um, for anybody, uh, culture for, for a human being, a, a single human being, is built on his beliefs, his values, and, and his attitude towards certain things. And, and, and uh, if you ask a group of people and you, what, uh, and you want to say what, what their culture is, they'll say, this is how we do it around here. And that's their culture because of their beliefs, their values, and, and their attitude towards certain things. Now, Microsoft and Safety Wallet uh, vision is to change their beliefs and their values and their attitude toward health and safety with this course so that they want to do it and not have to do it. Mm -hmm. Dion, so the, the question that I now have from, from the comment that um, uh, John has made is how do you see the role of health and safety and its landscape in the future evolving from courses like this one? Well, the one thing where I have a belief that's slightly different to most people and that is that human beings, human beings are always changing. We don't change necessarily dramatically we don't always observe the change, but because we are alive, one of the elements that we have, are, we will go through change. Anybody can look at themselves, look at yourself and compare yourself with a version of you from 10 years or 20 years ago. Without observation, change is not always noticed. So let's first appreciate that change is coming and always will be there. Nothing stays the same. Nothing that's alive stays the same. Company cultures, even you know, larger country cultures, um, change through time. It's not always very obvious because it's a slow moving process. So let's appreciate it. Change is going to happen. But now we sit with the dilemma. Are we going to change according to external factors, just by chance? Or are we going to say, let us pre-design how we want to change. 
what we want to change to. And if we can predetermine what do we want to change to, we can install processes to make that happen, we can end up with great results. Now, if we take this into a health and safety perspective, what is the predetermined change we want? We want a positive culture towards health and safety. Everybody. How do we do it? Well, we need certain training, mindset changes, influencing of the beliefs and the values, uh, creating different attitudes, coaching people, different types of conversations, uh, different ways of implementing rules and policies that are already been in place. So it's not a singular action that's going to happen. It is a variety of different actions merged together that will progressively assist people to change in the direction that they choose to. So how will that change health and safety? Um, revolutionize the industry, I would, I would say, is probably the shortest answer. Um, Dion mentioned earlier, we, we started talking about this many, many years ago, and we've had lots of conversations, and I think the, one of the reasons we could develop this course is because we share some of the passion. We've, we've all experienced injuries in the work environment, and it's horrific. What do we want to do? We want to make sure we can learn safely. With everything attached to their bodies that was the, the morning they went to work. That's the concept. So how will that affect the industry? I think this is going to completely alter the industry. It's, it's going to reshuffle the industry over the next two, three years, completely. Yeah, I fully agree with you, Dion. And Ukert, uh, from my personal point of view, if you want to implement a health and safety culture in your company, and you don't go on this uh, coaching course, there's no way that you will be, be able to do that um, on your own with all, all the tools that we are providing. Or at least with much difficulties, which, well, which means that this would probably make it a lot easier if you've got the tools, yeah. the mechanisms, the support mm. that would come from the course and with the course. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting for me because we talk about creating a health and safety culture. <clears throat> There's already an existing culture. It may just not be a healthy and safe one. So we're, we're essentially replacing one with the other. It's just more difficult when you need to replace a culture that is reckless uh, with people that are not like-minded, that don't think the way that you do um, without the tools that you have. Yeah, well, without, co without coaching, it becomes a, um, a dictatorship. The MD or the CO says, this is the policy, this is the way you're going to do it. There's no buy-in from, from the staff. And that's why I say, how are you going to change? You can't force culture change. It has to be coached. And that's why I say why this course uh, uh, carries so much weight for us. Because we, now we are actually training uh, coaches to go and implement it and then sit and see the people as people and understand their side of the story before you start uh, putting in processes that work towards a better health and safety culture. Mm. Coincidentally, while we were talking about support uh, and creating culture, there's a question that pop up, uh, popped up here now, uh, and it's for you, Leon. Um, it's from a safety wallet subscriber who asks not to be named, and they say, can you speak to the level of support that businesses can expect from safety wallet in terms of implementing the concepts covered in the course, and what kind of ongoing resources or assistance are available? Yeah, so, so obviously the online training course is the first point of reference. Uh, from a safety wallet perspective, um, all our staff is now going to do the course as well. So we would understand the concepts and we've done the NLP and we've done a lot of work over the last, yeah, I would say seven, eight years, we've done a lot of work uh, around mindset change. Um, so, so from from safety wallet and MacroSafe's perspective, we understand uh, how that change works. Um, support uh, once the course has been done, uh, we will support that process because we we, we understand it, and then action uh, factory would also be involved in in putting groups in place where whoever has done the course would be on this group and, and like-minded people would constantly talk to one another 
and Dion would obviously from his side also assist and coach and give advice and so forth. And 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 um, myself and Johnny and Orchid yourself would most probably be on the groups as well so that we can support and, and assist where assistance is needed. It's not a, a easy part. Uh, there are challenges. Uh, uh, each factory or each office is different from each other and it's fantastic to have a platform like that and share your problems, share your challenges that you've got and, and let us as a group uh, discuss those issues and, and, and let you go and try and do it differently and from what you've done and it works it's obviously also going to come back to the group and, and that's how we're all going to learn in years to come. Cross-pollination. Cross-pollination, yes. Well, you've, you've touched on something now <clears throat> which I wanted to allude to earlier. So the relationship between Safety Wallet and MacroSafe is quite clear. Yeah. Um, Safety Wallet is, is the subscription-based solution with the help of my safety shop. And MacroSafe, you know, boots on the ground, come in and assist. So with individuals that go through this course, uh, working hand-in-hand -hand with a MacroSafe professional as well, who's also gone through the course, who understands the concepts and principles from an NLP perspective as well. That would just make things a lot easier uh, from a support perspective. Uh, you know, if, if I've got a gripe and I don't understand how to get over this challenge, I can phone a friend. Yeah. Um, you know, pick up the phone, you know, chat about it, uh, get a bit of guidance, take me back to the basics maybe if that's what's, what's needed and then let's move forward again. Yeah, it's a community. That's awesome. We're mm. building a community of like-minded people. Mm. And, uh, and in that way, we can bring change. That's awesome. That's awesome. I want to I bring in something here, if I, if I may. I, I spoke about something on the platform the other day, and afterwards I realized, wow, this is quite interesting because that's exactly what you're doing. Someone, someone asked me a question how is it possible that humans have sort of risen to the top of the food chain? Because if you look at us as, as when we've been born, if you look at a baby, they can't feed themselves, they can't move, they need something to take care of themselves. It's cold, we don't have thick skins, we don't run fast, we're not that strong, we don't swim well. There's very few. <laughs> I mean, how did we make it on this on this on this planet? And the interesting answer is there's three elements of things that we do as humans. Uh, the first one is we have the ability to think, mm. hypothesize, strategize. Uh, we think brilliantly actually. But here's the second key, and this is where really the importance, and if you look at this training course, if you look at what Microsoft and Safety are doing, it's very much aligned. So number one, we can think, we can plan. But thinking and planning on its own won't bring change. We have to be able to communicate successfully. That's the second element that human beings can do extremely well with insight. And the third thing is, because we can communicate our plan, we can team together as a community and create and change. And that's the beauty of what is happening. If you look at what Leon you know, started many, many years ago, he was thinking. He started communicating that idea. He pulled a team of people that are like-minded together with capabilities and skills, and now as a group we can make it happen. Hmm. So inside of this entire concept, and he used the word, and the word was perfect, creating a community. So there's been a thought process, it's been communicated, now let's stand together and make this happen. Mm. That's how we as humans rose up to the ladder and become in control of, you know, became in control of this world. That's why we're on the top of the food chain. You can do those three things well. So why not do it? Mm. In this picture. Um, we've, we've spoken about support, um, so I, I just quickly want to come back to just a few nitty gritties, if I may call it that, with regards to the course itself. Um, the level of engagement and participation that businesses can expect from, from this course. Um, is it only a theoretical course? Is, is there a practical element to it? Um, we've, we've spoken about the key elements that can be taken away from the course as well. Um, Take us through the engagement and participation that people can expect to get, that level that they can expect to get from us. So, it, in simple terms, it's an online video course. So, what would happen, a typical student would log in on day one, you register for the course, now you, you've got the course material available. 
there's a few elements that we've done very deliberately that people must be aware of. The, the first element is we created the course in what's called the drip feed process. So if you really want to bring change, if you want people to shift their mindsets, to shift their values, to shift their beliefs, to shift their attitudes, to shift their automatic default habitual reactions, responses and behaviors, you need to give people permission to change over time. If you expect someone to change within a day or two, you might just be disappointed. So what we did is we said this course needs to first and foremost bring change in the person that's studying the course. So it's true for it. What does that mean? It means there's one lesson available per day. Hmm. Only one. It's one element that we teach in that course. You watch the clip, there's a text document you can download and you can view and you can read and you can build your, your folder around it. But there's one element that you're going to study today. A lot of these elements will either have a quiz or a practical application that you need to do to ensure that you understood, comprehended and applied what was learned in that one single lesson for, for, for that day. And you have to complete that to continue to the next one. So the way the course has been built was to progressively teach people but whilst we teach, we also bring change. So it's not just about learning theory. It is very much about getting understanding. Linked to that, a lot of the elements in the course are very practical. So obviously there's theoretical processes, there's deep understanding, which is fascinating learning, and then there's a practical approach, as in, okay, well, what can I do and how do I do it? What if? something happens in the work environment. How do I, as a coach, now react, respond? What do I do? What does that coaching conversation sound like? What are the processes and the steps I can follow? So all of those practical elements are built in, but they're built in so that we take that learning in, in small data bits. You know, if, if you take a huge amount of information, you throw it at the human brain, you scan through it and say, I like that piece, I like that piece. And we literally forget about the rest. But if I take a vast amount of information, complex information, skills, abilities, process, techniques, and I break it down and I systematically in a easily absorbable amount and style, and I feed that over time, then we learn, then we retain the information, then we feel comfortable and confident with it. And that's when we start applying it. So that's the way the course has been built. It's been built to slowly, progressively alter the coach, teach the person the coach's skills, capabilities, else in the process, teach them practical techniques on what to do. But to do it in such a way that when they finish with the course, they know, they know. <laughs> and they know that they can. And that to me is the critical thing. I don't want to it's, it's useless, you just put it into a book, publish it. People put it through the book, and they put the book down, and they say, well, I read the book, so now I know. Not necessarily. It's going to be in your bones. It's going to be part of you. It's going to be part of your values, your beliefs, your identity, your attitude. It's the only way to read it in this change. So for me, it sounds like as much as you are training coaches, you are coaching coaches. Plus, the, the platforms available that, that Leon spoke of earlier, where candidates or persons can engage with yourself and others that would be on the platform and to learn from their experiences. It's re-coaching coaches, which for me sounds amazing. So there's one last thing I want to add. So there's a course, it's preferred, it's well designed, it's going to take you know, people time to get through it, it's going to bring the change you look for. But with most of these courses, what happens afterwards? And is that course going to be that way for the next couple of years? So the comparison I want to make, imagine for a moment a mechanical engineer designed a course 50 years ago and all mechanical engineers since then has done the same course. Would a modern day vehicle really exist? No, it wouldn't because that course, had, even though it was developed great in the beginning, 
because of changes in this world we live in, the course itself had to be adjusted. So we are creating from all the students that's doing that course, we will be creating a community. And that community, there will be personal involvement on myself and other coaches, but we will be monitoring the conversations, the requests, the challenges, the practical feedback, um, the measurables inside the organizations. And on a consistent basis, and literally over the next couple of years, the course will be tweaked, upgraded, when we notice something that needs to go in, we will add it in. I don't think we should be arrogant enough to say we've built the perfect course, then we're talking from pure ego. Mm. But I think we've done an excellent job with the information we've had at hand and with the experience between the other deal and myself, we've got a vast amount of experience in, in these industries. So it's built, but it's all continuously going to be upgraded, improved. And that upgraded improvement um, for the students that join now will become available, They'll, they will get notifications once I upgrade anything and they will have access to these upgrades. That's the one part. The second part is the moment you subscribe on the course, the moment you purchase the product, you have life access to it. So what will happen is a year down the line, maybe even two years down the line, one of the students would go and say, well, I know there was something the hospital came up in that course, I can't remember, I need to go find it that they can go back into, into the course, they can log in, find a specific resource and just refresh their own minds again. So that course once purchased, it's life access, but it's life access for the consistent upgraded version as well. So it's not a, a once-off product and three years old that you can't use it anymore. It's a continuous development product as well. So, but I think that's, that's a relevant point because we are going to learn from this, through this experience and that the knowledge that we gain will be passed on to, to our students. I think that's, that's really important. Um, you know, if, if, if I consider, you know, my previous learning experiences where you would, you know, do a degree or you would do a diploma or a certificate or whatever the case may be. and. Once you've finished, uh, it's the, the mass production machine has kind of you know, pushed you out and you go into the big wide world and best of luck. And when you're looking for support, uh, you're not always surrounded by the best of peers to give you the, that, that kind of support. Yeah. Um, and if things change in the qualification, you're not even necessarily privy to that change. So this for me is kind of like the last nail in the coffin, if I may call it that. Uh, you know, it seals the deal that whatever you would experience during the course, you would continue to experience afterwards. And if you're stuck, you can simply just put up your hand and ask a question exactly. and, and keep moving forward. And the same question gets asked over and over. It's a simple reflection on the course. It means, well, we haven't put that information into the course. Mm. So let's do it. Mm. Let's improve it. And uh, I mean, I mentioned this before, humans go through change and we are going through learning. We've learned more about the human brain and, it's been, and our behaviors in the last 10 years than we have in the existence of humanity. So the, the speed at which we are learning is extreme. So let's keep our students and everybody else in place. Thank you, Dion. I'm really excited to see this course uh, doing its thing in practice, in the industry, in business, uh, and with people. Uh, unfortunately, this is all the time that we have for this discussion today. So your final thoughts and comments uh, before we say goodbye. Dion, I'll start with you. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. I think it's, it's been an amazing journey. We've put in a huge amount of effort and energy to develop this product, um, and it's finally here. Great stuff. Thank you. Leon. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, excited um, and, and, and to see what change we're going to bring into the industry is, is the part that excites me the most. So, so I'm extremely looking forward to it. I just want to mention Orchid that uh, the course is available on my safety shop. Um, the price is 14500 for for working the course. That's on my safety shop. If you're a safety wallet subscriber, your your discounts and your rewards then fall in line with 
with, uh, with that price and, and then you get your discounts off that. So, so everybody can go on their book and, and they'll receive a token and, um, and then we route them to Action Factory site of, of doing the course as such. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and um, I must say I'm very excited to get this course actually implemented with our clients and see how the culture changes. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much, Dion and Leon, for, for your input as well. Thank you. Thank you. Join us again next time on My Safety Hub, where we will further delve into the world of occupational health and safety. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and leave any comments or questions with regards to our conversation today in the section below.